You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with thanks to Wexford Insurances. Wexford Insurances. More information at wexfordinsurance.com. I'm joined now by Ed Hendrick, founder of Sanru.com. Good morning, Ed. Hi, Carol. Ed, thanks for joining me this morning. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about Sanru.com, please? Uh, Sanru.com is a business based in the Enniscorty Enterprise Center. We're a automated video interview, which is used by companies all over the world now to basically select people using online video for jobs. So candidates basically sit in front of a webcam and answer questions that companies want them to answer in uh, the, t- the selection process for that job. So it does away with the face-to-face first round interview, is that right? Yes, gets rid of the first round face-to-face and the first round phone interviews. So it reduces their recruitment cycle. And the benefits to the companies using the software? Benefits to the companies, very straightforward. Obviously takes out a huge amount of admin, uh, scheduling. The actual time of sitting through these interviews is reduced dramatically. And it just makes them a huge amount more efficient in relation to speed to hire, time to hire. What type of companies typically are using this? Uh, Sonru customers would range from uh, companies like Apple, uh, Paddy Power, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Citibank in in London. So a, a, a good range of international companies, but also uh, some smaller companies, more local companies like uh, Don Deal that I as well would be a client of ours. So it, it really ranges. Where did your original idea come from? Um, the original idea sort of came about uh, two ways. Um, me personally as a graduate, um, I had a lot of friends who were going for different job interviews and it, it, it was an awful process that they were going through in traveling up and down to Dublin from Wexford, for example, uh, to attend interviews and then being asked back in the week after for a different one. Just took up a huge amount of time from a candidate's perspective. Plus, um, I'd gotten very, very interested in online video as a potential uh, business and opportunity. And I guess I'd looked at the likes of YouTube and Skype and saw how successful they'd become um, and I guess looked at different ways that they could be used um, in a business sense and in a recruitment sense, it made a lot of sense. Um, So I guess we we were examining people uh, getting record deals through YouTube. So they were singing away on YouTube and the next thing they were getting a big uh, multi-million dollar record deal. So that, that sort of sparked off the idea of getting people on video uh, talking about themselves and I guess then um, um, we joined the Saudi's Enterprise Platform Program in 2007 and on that program we researched the idea talked to the market worked with some employers and sort of developed what Sonru is today through a number of iterations and, and pivots um, so that's I guess the foundation of the idea So you came up with the idea you then completed the Saudi's Enterprise Platform Program what happened next? We uh, obtained a grant from Enterprise Ireland, an initial commercialization of research and development grant, um, and along with a feasibility grant that we got through the County Enterprise Board, we started building a prototype um, of what the product would do, what it would uh, look like. And we then uh, carried out some tests uh, with candidates actually in Galway and London. Uh, we were our first candidates that we interviewed, and it worked uh, with a very, very, I suppose, basic prototype. It worked, it proved the concept. Um, and then we started on the path of looking for further investment to actually build out the product and make it something that we could release to the, to the general public and sell. And in relation to funding the project thereafter, how did you go about that? I guess we received different types of grants from your enterprise board to Enterprise Ireland. Um, And then we, I suppose, met a number of investors through BES schemes. And um, I guess by being contacted by investors as well, we we generated quite a lot of PR in the last couple of years about our company, uh, which has sparked interests of people who are looking for uh, investment opportunities from an Irish perspective and also from investors abroad and uh, one of our investors is a Singapore based uh, Irish expat so um, you know it's it's strange or it's interesting where investment comes from. Just in relation to the BES funding that you mentioned can you advise our listeners a little bit more about that please? Yeah the BES is business expansion scheme um, and it's basically a scheme that's been put in place by uh, our government um, to offer tax incentives for investors 
to invest in startup companies, um, startup companies that have gotten a small bit of help so far with by some of the county enterprise boards, for example. Um, but it gives them a tax break on their income tax for the year um, if they invest in startups. It's an opportunity for investors to invest in the startups, potentially see a return on their investment, but also that tax incentive is very attractive for them. Um, and a lot of these investors, um, I think if you give them a small bit of an incentive, they'll, it'll push them that extra yard to invest in, in new startup companies in Ireland. It, you also mentioned that you drummed up a lot of interest through PR. How did you go about that? I guess um, we talked. I, I guess we talked to everyone we could about the product. Um, we put out press releases about our launch, um, about what we were doing, new clients signing up, um, but also we. Uh, we entered into some competitions, um, startup competitions, business plan competitions, and we were lucky enough to win a couple of them. We won the National uh, Bright Ideas Challenge that Bank of Ireland won in 2010 that uh, gained a lot of interest. Um, it, the, the, the main judge on that was Sean Gallagher um, from the Dragons Den at the time. Um, so stuff like that, I guess, uh, put us in front of the public eye um, and got us a lot of PR because during the time that we were launching and growing the business very early, um, it was 2008, 2009, 2010, um, there was a lot of doom and gloom around the, the economy. Um, and I think that journalists were looking for some positive stories as well. And we were a, a positive story. We always um, projected a positive um, attitude that we were going to do something and, and make a, a bit of a go of it and I think people sort of reacted well to that and responded well to it and published their story. For startups and growing businesses today there's no doubt about it access to finance is one of the biggest challenges facing them. Uh, what advice would you give after being down that road yourself to anybody in a situation where they intend starting a business or even growing one? Um, I guess it's very, very difficult to get access to finance. So that's the first thing. So one way to reduce the need to access to finance is to ease on the spending at the start. Uh, so that's a funny way about saying don't spend any money. Uh, so to start off with, what I would say is make sure that the product and the, con and the concept is right and that people are going to buy it before you invest a whole lot of money in it. So you've got to have proof from the market first that yes, this is going to work. Customers really want it. Once they begin using it, they won't be able to live without it. Um, and then you're sort of proving that concept with as little money as you sort of can do it with, if that makes sense again. Um, and then once you've got that proven, you have a stronger case to go to investors with. So the first piece of advice you'd give to anyone is carry out some detailed market research in relation to proving that a market exists for the product. Yes, that's hugely important. Um, a lot of startups spend a lot of money building products that no one wants. Um, and that's a massive problem. So, and that wastes everyone's time. You know, So you, you don't want to present a product that's not going to work. Once you've got that solid market research done and you've identified that there is a, a gap in the market for your product, then you've got a good story to tell to investors, to tell to the likes of Enterprise Ireland. Um, and then you just have to, to start pitching to them. Um, it may take an awful lot of pitches and presentations to get uh, any interest, but you just have to go through the, uh, the motions with it, I guess. And if you are very uh, passionate and you really, really want to make it happen, someone will invest if it's the right thing and it's, and it's going to happen for you. Ed, how supportive have the government agencies been of Sanru.com? And we've gotten a lot of support um, locally from the County Enterprise Board, um, and now we've moved on to working with Enterprise Ireland. Um, <clears throat> again, a lot of people... I guess bash the likes of Enterprise Ireland, but they do a fantastic job. Um, they put you through a screening process, though, that's challenging. Um, I think it's challenging in that they get a lot of applications and they want to make sure that you've um, done all your homework, you've done all the market research, and you're an investable business because, again, they are investing uh, the country's um, money, I guess. Um, but they have been fantastic. Enterprise Ireland don't just only give grants, and uh, they also 
give fantastic help abroad. Um, we would liaise a lot with their offices in Australia, Singapore, London, the US. Um, you can have the, the use of their office space over there, meeting space over there. Um, they also help you with business accelerators on the ground in these markets. So they would identify people that could work with you in a particular market that you're looking at entering and help you do some research or identify uh, potential customers in, in that market. So a lot of very fantastic work that's not just grant related. And I guess a lot of people focus on the grants, but there's a whole other uh, range of services that they provide. That's great to hear. Certainly your experience has been excellent with the agencies both on a local and national level. What has been your number one challenge to date in the development of Sanru.com? It's a tough question. Um, I guess there's a number of challenges in a in a startup business. You first you've got to get the product right, or the, at least the concept. Um, then you've got to put the team together to uh, um, to deliver on what you're saying you're going to do. I'll raise the funding, put the product in the market. Um, I guess the number one challenge is, I'm going to put it out there as the balancing act of spending money on the product and getting sales in. Um, so I, I hope that makes sense. It's, in, it's how much do I spend on the product? How good do I make it? How much do I invest in product development versus how quickly can I get the sales coming in uh, to cover those costs? That's been a challenge. That's where you need to raise um, investment funding um, but once you raise investment funding um, investors expect the sales to grow 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 and um, where in reality a lot of companies aren't at that stage yet when they have the product 100 percent right and all they have to do is scale it um, because there's a lot of refinement you need to do uh, to the product to the business to the marketing before you can uh, move into ultra uh, sales growth so what you're saying is the product needs to be nailed before it can be scaled. Yes. Just to put some numbers on this, Ed, how successful in financial terms have Sanru been in relation to seeking and securing finance? Um, I guess we've raised about uh, 1.3 million uh, euros uh, to date. So uh, again, made up between uh, Enterprise Ireland uh, funding and private investors. So what you're basically saying is that venture capitalists, investors and Enterprise Ireland are open for business. Very much so. Very much so. If there's an interesting idea, if there's a product that they see uh, being useful to customers, yes, absolutely. And Sanru have expanded into international markets recently. How has this come about? I guess we've always wanted to be a global company. So we've always had that vision. Our first protocol is the UK and that's working very well for us. We've put a, a guy in, on the ground in the UK, which has made a, a massive difference um, in comparison to us flying over and back to try to do a week's meetings uh, every now and then. Um, so which it's very important to have people on the ground. Um, we've then gone into other markets by, I suppose, a bit of luck in that People have contacted us, um, clients have contacted us, they've opened up new markets, and we've started working with a number of resellers uh, in these markets. And I guess that's a way of testing a market. Um, it's a way of working with someone on the ground that has a lot of knowledge about that market. Um, so it's, it's been a number, of, a number of ways through people on the ground, clients and resellers, and then the help of Enterprise Ireland in the different uh, country offices. And for the purpose of advice to those that would be considering international expansion today, any Wexford businesses that might be considering it, what piece of or nugget of advice would you give them? Uh, don't be afraid of it. There's a huge opportunity there. Ireland's a very small market. Um, in reality, these places aren't much different to our local market. Um, use the agencies, the Enterprise Ireland's, um, to do some research on the ground before you dive in head first. Um, so get some clients on the ground first before moving over um, and setting up a full office. Um, so I suppose a bit, a bit by bit, but not be afraid of it. Okay, Ed, the future looks bright for Sanru. Thanks for coming in this morning and the best of luck in the future. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with thanks to Wexford Insurances. Wexford Insurances, number one for business insurance in County Wexford.